All right. Hi there. Thank you so much for joining us today for our info session about Frost Online, uh, part of you online at the University of Miami. My name is Rachel. I'm the director of Frost Online, and I will be the host and moderator for today's event. I'm just going to run through here. Uh, this event's going to be about 60 minutes. There will be a recording available after the session that you can watch. And please feel free to submit your questions during the session using the, using the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. And just a reminder, if you ever need to, you can speak with an enrollment advisor at any time by calling the number listed there or using the live chat feature. I'm just going to run through what we're going to discuss today. So we're going to have a conversation with some of our faculty and graduates. Uh, we hope that by hearing from them, you're going to learn a little bit more about our programs, what our alumni are up to after graduating, and uh, letting you know about what you can do with this degree for your career. You're also going to find out how you can receive your $300 deposit fee waiver, and we'll just cover the application and financial aid deadlines. Um, in Frost Online, we offer two degrees. We have the Master of Music in Music Business and Entertainment Industries, and also the Master of Arts in Arts Presenting and Live Entertainment Management. In addition, we offer eight graduate level certificates that are from the music industry field. So we have a lot to choose from. Um, I just wanna go ahead and introduce our panel for today. For our faculty, we have Associate Dean Serena Alton, who is also the director of the Music Business and Entertainment Industries Program. We have Ray Sanchez, Associate Dean, and the chair of our Music, Media, and Industry Department. And then we have Professor Gary Wood, who is also the director of the Arts Presenting and Live Entertainment Management Program. So thank you all for being here today. And we also have six of our graduates joining us today. We have Taylor, who completed the Arts Presenting degree in 2017. He's currently a fundraiser and performing arts consultant in the DC area. Alyssa, who completed the music business degree in 2019, is currently a singer, songwriter, and touring musician. Ariel, he, is, he completed the arts presenting degree in 2019 and is a promotions coordinator at ESPN. Michelle, who completed the music business degree in 2020, is president and artistic director of Broadway Kids Studio. Miguel, he completed the music business degree in 2019, and he's faculty at Universidad Peruana de Ciencias Aplicadas. Uh, School of Music in Peru. And we have Riyard Huggins, who completed the music business degree in 2020, composer, producer, jazz piano, recording artist, and he lives in the Nashville area. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to begin by asking our panelists some questions to give you an idea about our program and their experience in Frost Online. So I'm going to start with faculty. Uh, the First question I'd like to direct to Ray. Uh, what do you do to help students excel in an online environment? Yeah. So, thanks, Rachel. Um, well, uh, I've been teaching online now for, how long has it been, eight years? It's the beginning of Frost Online or so, something like that. And uh, we've learned a whole lot along the way. Um, I think uh, there are two things that are extremely important, actually three things. Uh, it's not just online. Some of you may have taken online courses before, uh, but um, uh, we, we work very hard to uh, create engaging courses. Um, all of our faculty are professionals in the field. They, they know what they're talking about. Um, but it's also, you know, the, uh, the design of the courses themselves, uh, the design of the degree program, uh, everybody should understand that we don't have a different degree online as we do on campus. Uh, the music business degree is the oldest uh, to, uh, master's in music business in the country, been around since the late 60s. Um, and um, it's exactly the same program that the on-campus students, the, only the modality is different. Uh, one of the things that I personally like to do is have regular face-to-face -face sessions basically like this and where we're, we're talking and you know exchanging ideas and uh, basically everybody who's taken a class with me on this call uh, has already gone through that so they they may be better able to say you know if they liked it or not hopefully they did um, but um, but you know we try to make that you know personal connection because online can feel like oh it's this, this separate this distant thing you know 
It's basically like going on Netflix or something. Well, in some ways that's true, but, but really we work pretty hard to also keep uh, a personal touch. Thank you. And uh, Gary, the same question for you. What do you do to help students excel in an online environment? Hello, everybody. Uh, well, as uh, Professor Sanchez was saying, one of the most important things for me to do is get to know the students in, in a personal way. Um, I often have them submit something almost immediately, whether it's a short bio or some kind of task that gets into who they are, um, artistically who they are in terms of their pursuits and career. And that way, right from the beginning, uh, I feel like we're in the same room together. So getting to know each other in what our goals are for the course and for career, I think is an essential component of making sure that there's success throughout the course because you know they go by fairly quickly. And so we've got to do things in a way that really gets in depth right away. I think too that laying out a really specific calendar, it's easy to allow things to slip away. So I, I provide a course calendar with what's due and when it's due and what the resources are right up front so that everybody, me and everybody involved can put those into our, our smart uh, devices or on our online calendars to make sure that we're staying up to date on everything that's required. Most of the courses are cumulative in nature where we continue to add skills and information into this artistic toolbox, this managerial toolbox. And so that feeling of accumulating information over time and ending with a, with a true feeling of completeness and wholeness is really what the, the philosophy of each course is. And so again, getting off to a really good start in that personal connection is, a, is important to that success. Thank you. Sarana, any question for you? What are some valuable lessons or experiences gained specifically by across students in our programs? Sorry, I have two different layers of mute. <clears throat> the answer to that question is really the same, uh, whether you're a student in Frost Online or a student in our on-campus program. Um, and what one of the things that just unique um, is our faculty in particular, and the fact that they are industry professionals. They still are industry professionals. Um, and so it's not the case that, you know, you have a set of communications that are purely academic in nature and that you're, you're talking to professors who maybe never worked in the field or haven't in a very long time. You're, you're interacting with and learning from professors who have had lengthy careers and are still heavily engaged in the industry. And so um, we think that makes us quite special because it's a rapidly changing industry. <clears throat> I'm sure even if you have never studied it before, just as a fan of music um, and live shows and, and recorded music, you know that already. And so faculty who aren't still engaged in the industry can, can become out of date in their knowledge. It, it can happen. Um, more so in this discipline than than other disciplines. And so so our, our faculty are something that are called pracademics. Um, I love that term. I didn't make it up, but I love it, love it. I heard it once and I've kind of grabbed onto it because we're practicing academics. You know, the same way you wouldn't want to learn how to do heart surgery unless you are learning from someone who does heart surgery. <laughs> um, the same thing is true for us. And so, um, so that's something that we, you know, we're really proud of at Frost. And again, as, as Ray had said, it's the same faculty, you know, that are teaching our students on campus and online. <clears throat> and so, you know, that's, that's really important. We also, we've been around since the 60s. Um, obviously our online program is not not that old, but that's again where, you know, it's the same program. And so we have an extensive alumni base, um, hundreds and hundreds of members on our LinkedIn group, which is now how we keep track of alumni, help facilitate um, engagement between alumni. And so, you know, that's just another example of how students in Frost Online are plugging into a very well established program and getting all those benefits that our on-campus students get, you know, um, it just in a different way. And and one thing I just I have to kind of laugh about um, in your your first question to to Ray and Gary about, you know, how how things are uh, positioned to help students succeed in an online world. You know, what's fascinating is all of our on-campus students are now trying to catch up with what all of our online students know, you know, um, and and so 
there's a couple of, you know, great things about that where we really are realizing um, the way the courses are structured <clears throat> is so much better than um, an on-campus class that's just got a camera in the classroom. Um, you know, the way that our, our videos are are edited and are the right size so that, you know, they're not an hour and 15 minute lecture that maybe you didn't have an hour and 15 minutes to sit down that day. Maybe you had 30 minutes, you know, and you'll have that a couple times that week um, so that you can then, you know, pop in and out of the content um, in a way that is more manageable with your schedule. Um, so it's really quite different than just sort of a, a camera in the physical or virtual classroom. Um, and, and professors now who are trying to interact with their students virtually, um, thanks to you know, uh, what COVID has done, are, are realizing that the, the format of the content really makes a difference. And so, um, so you know, we're, we're happy we have that already. And now our on-campus students are trying to uh, catch up with what our online students have known all along. Great, thank you. Uh, Gary, a question for you. How do these degree programs give students a well-rounded education and experience? Well, you know, the program is designed, despite the fact that it's uh, online and we work together in that way, but try to make it as practical and experiential as possible. Many of my students who come into the program are working while they do the degree. And so I try to, if it's possible to incorporate the work that they're actually doing in the field into the topics that we're working uh, in the course itself, um, which, which really gives them uh, an immediacy, which is, I think, a really important uh, for the learning. I think, too, that um, the course is designed to be flexible. Each of the courses are flexible to meet the unique needs of the students because with arts presenting and most of our degree programs, they, they have lots of different streams of career pursuits and areas that they're interested in from managing artists all the way to actually presenting live events and everything in between. So a lot of the tasks are designed for them to be able to, again, incorporate their perspective, their professional wherewithal into the shaping of that task and the outcome that they're after based upon their particular area of interest. It's not, a, it's not one size fits all. And I think that makes, it really makes the program extremely vibrant for, for all, everybody involved. Thank you. And Serena, same question for you. How does the music business program give students a well-rounded education and experience? Um, so, you know, that's another factor we're really proud of, of our program is that we, we've covered a number, we cover a number of different verticals in the industry and um, and so we're we're not heavily into any one of them so between recorded music um and music publishing um as well as you know licensing marketing um you know we have we sort of cut across the spectrum um really that's a, a philosophical choice um i think you know we believe that whatever part of the industry you're going to pursue you need to have a foundational knowledge in all of it it will help you in that one area you go into. So let's say you're focused on marketing, um, understanding how copyright works, though, is really important in marketing. You know, um, th they're all interconnected. It's one ecosystem. And, you know, one of the things that I think gives our students a leg up once they start their professional career makes them different than somebody else they might be working side by side with who never studied music business is they do understand how all these things are connected. Um, because they got a well-rounded education. So um, between our courses, you know, the, the different kinds of um, speakers we bring in, the different relative experience of our faculty and the different backgrounds they have, um, I think makes our, our uh, across the board, our program um, diverse in the areas of the industry that it touches on. Um, and we think that that's, that's really important. And, you know, you might start off in one part of the industry and switch to another. You know, people's careers don't tend to just stay on one path. They, they kind of meander a bit and, and weave and, you know, turn left, turn right, come back to that. Um, and so having that breadth of knowledge is really important from a career development perspective, right? Um, you know, that's what distinguishes somebody who studied music business versus someone who's just come up through the music business through one vertical. Where they might know that. Thing very, very well, but they don't necessarily know how it connects to everything else. Great, thank you. 
And Ray, a question for you. Beyond the classroom, how does Frost help students succeed? Ah, well, uh, what, uh, what Professor Elton um, talked about there is no small thing. Um, I think the single biggest, if, if we have a secret sauce of anything, is the fact we've been around such a long time and our, um, our alums are basically in every corner of this industry. You will find um, a, a Frost School of Music, music business alum, uh, or actually Frost School of Music alum uh, of all kinds, even if they weren't full music business majors, maybe they minored in music business or a cognate music business or took courses in it, they're everywhere, uh, including at the highest levels of the industry. So um, that network is no small thing. Um, I, this industry, whether it's a recorded side or the live side, and yes, live is going to come back with a vengeance. It absolutely will. There's no doubt about it. Um, is, um, is very much um, a networking environment. Um, people, it, it's very much an interpersonal relationship environment. And um, you, you just, you need to be where there are others that are already there. So, um, while right now, and I say this right now because there might be a hint in there of something, we don't have a formal mechanism. Uh, we have been extremely successful over decades uh, with the, um, our students, I should say, our students have been extremely successful over the decades in making the connections that they need to have lifelong careers. Great, thank you. And Gary, the same question for you. How do you help the students in your program succeed? Well, you know, one of the things that I hope um, is always going to be true is that um, our wonderful faculty, and I'd like to be part of in that group, uh, is always accessible. Um, usually during the course of a single course or a, a person's degree pursuit, we have numerous individual one-on-one -on -one conversations about the work that they're doing or that needs that they have as it related to the career. So I, I'm an ongoing resource and available because things are changing in live entertainment. And so I've had a lot of conversations recently about shifts in the industry, about the way that we're obviously handling and managing artists and, and doing virtual events and on and on. So one of the ways that I'd like to believe is that it's the university, the Frost School of Music, my, fac my, my faculty colleagues, myself and alumni are accessible and available to continue to be here for you um, after you finish the degree. Great, thank you so much. And thank you to our faculty panel. I'd like to move on to our alumni now and ask them some questions. <laughs> All right, for Alyssa, what was your goal when pursuing a graduate degree? Hi, so my goal in pursuing my master's in music business and entertainment industry, um, so I'm a performer and I wanted to be part of a program that would give me a good foundation in the more behind the scenes aspect of it. So when, so in my own career, I'd be able to apply those skills um, and it would give me a competitive edge, but also give me the knowledge and the skills to make sure that I, and my music was being protected um, and I would be able to navigate the industry um, with the knowledge that can, you know, help me protect myself and my music. Great, thank you. Uh, Taylor, same question for you. What was your goal in, in pursuing a graduate degree? Of course, um, so I actually had the opportunity to also go to the music business undergrad program at the Frost School of Music at the University of Miami. And through that program, I interacted with a lot of the people that were mostly on the classical music side of things. Um, so I ended up really feeling like the live entertainment industry was a little bit more my pace and what I thought I wanted to do with my career. So I ended up doing the um, AP Live master's degree program to better understand everything about the uh, live entertainment industry aspects um, and also 
nonprofit aspects um, that do dovetail with a lot of the for-profit work in the industry. Great, thank you. Uh, Rayard, a uh, different question for you. What attracted you to this specific program? Hi, so I was just super blessed to be able to attend uh, the Frost School of Music um, graduate program in music business. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that attracted me was uh, as Dean Elton said, it's you know the versatility that you get with the major was super super in my wheelhouse for what I was doing and what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I as Rachel said, I'm a composer and a producer, um, and so I produce aspiring artists and run a record label. And so I felt that as I was building that company, Frost would give me uh, a diverse set of tools in the industry, in the in the business aspect and the legal aspect to be able to. Uh, help and mentor those other artists as well as in my own career, um, as Alyssa said, you know, be able to protect myself and and uh, my music. And so uh, that's really what I found valuable about uh, about Frost. It gave me uh, so much diversity in, of knowledge in the industry and in the music business, which is super imperative to know if you're in really anything at all, the business part and knowing the ins and outs um, and how to uh, make sure that you're secure in your work and and your and your artistry uh that's just super important so that's really why i um, was attracted to this particular program great thank you and uh, ariel same question for you what attracted you to this specific program hi rachel thank thank you for having me hi everyone um it's funny because i actually did not have a lot of information on frost online and, and frost music uh in general it was actually a friend of mine that was originally looking into the program that told me about it and so when i decided to pursue graduate school it was one of the first schools that, that i looked into and similar to what everybody has already said i i think specifically Alyssa, i wanted to find a program that would uh, help me generate the skill that i have in my current position as well as any future opportunities that I could find in entertainment, which is the field that I'm already in. And I think what helped me solidify as well is that Frost has an, am an amazing scholarship program that really helped a ton. And so being able to, you know, not have that financial implication as well as learn critical skills that are uh, good for my current position as well as any future opportunities, I think is what really solidified the program for me. Great, thank you. Uh, Miguel, question for you. Why did you choose the University of Miami? Well, thank you for the invitation. Um, I chose the University of Miami because, well, uh, I know of it uh, because it's a it's a really good university, and uh, the program that it offered, Frost School of Music offered, had you know all the all the things I wanted to to study, uh, to learn about the more you know uh, 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 the business side of the of music business. When I started my career as an undergraduate student in Peru. Um, I, all I wanted to be was a, a, a guitarist and a composer, and I wanted to, to, you know, to write arrangements. But as I went on with, uh, you know, as the years passed during my career, I discovered that I, I really wanted to learn more about the, the business side, and and that's why when I l finished my career, I wanted to study uh, a master degree really that has to do had to do with. Uh, with business and then uh, I learned about uh, Frost School of Music and the program it offered and uh, well I thought that that's what I wanted that's what I want and uh, I you know I reviewed uh, the the courses offered and decided that that was the best choice for me. Thank you. Michelle same question for you why did you choose University of Miami? Hi, everybody. Um, I chose University of Miami um, because really I knew the staff was already stellar. Um, having, having obtained my undergraduate from Frost, um, I had no question that having a degree from Frost School of Music was valuable and completely respected in our industry. Um, I was looking for something. I'm a mom of two with a full-time job running a business, so I was looking for something very versatile, but that would also challenge me. And it was, it was one of those situations where I came across a program that actually fit all my needs. I was trained as a performer and I really needed more of the business side that was geared toward a musician. And that's, in my opinion, very hard to find in an online, online platform that truly generates the future performers, the future entrepreneurs, and the caliber of, of faculty that we're able to work with to me is immeasurable. Um, 
it was just a fantastic program all the way around from faculty to the classes were very intriguing, very challenging, and they fit around my schedule. So I had no doubt that it would help me in my career. Great, thank you. Uh, Taylor, what was the most valuable or applicable thing that you learned during this program? Well, um, it's funny. So when you asked me this question uh, and sent it to me before I, I got onto the video call, um, I actually went to go to my bookshelf and I picked up a book that we read in one of our classes is called True North, um, uh, uh, Discovering Your Authentic Leadership. And um, that book was really impactful for me because it helped me realize that, um, that I needed to figure out what missionally my focus was and how I wanted to impact the world. Um, and because the AP Live program is both for-profit and nonprofit focused, um, it really allowed me to consider mission as a driver in the nonprofit industry and how uh, many arts organizations who aren't focused on making sure their actions match their mission. Um, they drift and um, it's been very true to see that again and again in my career and I'm thankful to have learned that in the program. Great, thank you. Uh, Miguel, the same question for you. What was the most valuable or applicable thing that you learned during the program? Well, I don't think that there's one thing that uh, you know, one single thing that I could choose. I think the whole program was great for me. Um, I think that what I can say is that I could, I can uh, take many of the knowledge that I got from 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 the program and apply it to my to my own career, to my own teaching, to my undergraduate students at the university. Um, but what I can tell them uh, is that uh, there are different uh, you know, scenarios, different realities, uh, different from the ones that we have uh, in my country in Peru. And that we can apply some of the, you know, of the, uh, uh, you know, of the system that, that it's uh, well, especially the system that is currently uh, running in the United States regarding the music, music industry, and try to apply it to our country because we mostly have, uh, you know, uh, our our you know music industry in Peru is more about. Uh, um, independent artists. We have no, you know, label presence, almost zero label presence, but I'm convinced that I can apply, uh, you know, many of, of what, you know, a uh, good part of the knowledge I got and try to, you know, for example, um, make students, encourage students to try and build their own label. Um, or for example, try to, or just uh, make them, you know, question the fact that they are not only musicians, that they are not only intended to, to play their instrument or, or to compose, but to think music as a business, uh, to make it, you know, to make their careers thrive under that uh, philosophy too. So that's. Great, thank you. Uh, Alyssa, a question for you. Is this your first time in a fully online program? And how does it compare to being on campus, if it was? Yeah, so um, this was my first time in a fully online program. And that's part of the reason why I opted to pursue the degree, because prior to COVID, I was touring pretty much 10, 11 months out of the year. Um, and I loved that no matter where I was in the world, I could be taking my course and um, still working towards that goal. And it's obviously, you know, very different from being in a classroom, um, but I found that it was better in a lot of ways. Sometimes in an in-person classroom, um, you know, maybe you're not just, you can't focus that day or you have other things on your mind or the deadlines, or whatever. So your mind is not there in the class. Um, but what I loved about the format was that you could listen to the lectures, um, when your schedule permitted and when you best learn, if that's in the morning or at night. Um, and also the way that they broke up the segments, I think the, the, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, um, where a lot of the video clips were only like five or seven minutes long. And then there would be questions and like topics and things to review. So you weren't just sitting there from start to finish. You had little checkpoints to make sure that you were really comprehending the material um, before you moved on to the next thing. And, um, and also I really enjoyed meeting a lot of, or virtually meeting a lot of my peers and, and other students in the program. Um, I found when I was an undergrad attending, you know, classes in person, 
you'd see the same people, but you don't necessarily get to know the people that you're in class with unless you're doing some sort of group project. Um, but I love that in every class that I did with Frost, they had uh, like a message board where everyone introduced themselves. So you got to know where people were from and what they were, um, what job they were working and, and what they were pursuing and their goals and their motives. So I felt like there was a really good sense of community um, and just getting to meet so many different people. Great, thank you. Uh, Brayard, same question for you. Is this your first time in a fully online program? And if so, how does it compare to being on campus? Yeah, so this was my very first time. And I have to say, I was kind of nervous uh, when I applied to uh, an online program because I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm a people person. I'm, I'm an artist. I you know, manage different people and I'm constantly talking to somebody. So I love talking and being in that in-person interaction. And so I was nervous that I wouldn't get that kind of engagement and so I, I applied really going off the robustness of Frost's program and again, the versatility uh, that it would give me uh, for what I wanted to do in my career, which kind of trumped my uh, dreams of being in, in person, um, but it really exceeded my expectations. Like, thank God for technology because, you know, the professors were very, very attentive and always available. Um, as Alyssa said, the group projects um, and, the, and the discussion boards really gave you a sense of um, a family that you, you know, I didn't, that I felt like I didn't get in my undergrad and I went in undergrad in person um, and there were only 10 people in my major and I still didn't feel like I connected with those people as much as I connected with my virtual family uh, with Frost. And so, um, you know, there's nothing like being in person on campus, obviously, and having that, you know, like the school spirit and the fun and the, you know, activities and stuff. But, you know, online really was where it was at for me because, you know, from a schedule perspective, I really wanted to uh, continue to build my company and build my career. And still when I, you know, after that, after that all finished, I still wanted to pursue my degree in my own time and use what I've applied here on the ground uh, in Nashville with, uh, with my job that I do um, without having to, you know, travel across campus and stuff. So it really was convenient for me financially and just personally. Um, and so this is, this is truly the best online program uh, that I read about and going through it, it was truly the best online program I think that's out there. Uh, if you want something that's, you know, catered really to you and your time to where you can learn at your own pace, uh, there's no other program like Frost, uh, the music business uh, online program. And I, I truly mean that. Thank you. Uh, Ariel, how did earning your degree from UM impact your career growth? Yeah, definitely. So after I received my degree, um, it was definitely noticed by my company and now I'm definitely getting additional tasks, um, getting a lot more leadership structure, a lot more leadership type roles that definitely would not have come if I had not learned certain aspects from the U Miami program. I can um, speak specifically, you know, uh, part of my uh, job requirement is acquisitions of different events. And so learning how to, you know, um, understand contracts in the very beginning in Professor Elton's class definitely helped a ton to manage that and understand what, how that could impact our company. Um, learning how to basically create an event from scratch with Professor Wood, that helped a ton um, to really understand any shadowing opportunities that I would get with some of those events that I, that I um, took on, um, created those opportunities to, to put that management part of the degree into place. Um, I know it was mentioned earlier, learning copyright, learning copyright law with Professor Sanchez definitely helped on the marketing piece of my job. So overall, the, the um, managerial growth is there because of the degree. The uh, additional opportunities that I have now obtained in my profession because I now hold those uh, the expertise that I got from from Frost Online is there, and I'm I'm really happy that I was part of the program because now I have the leadership abilities that I needed uh, at least on the business side, and now I can take those in my current position. And again, if I choose to go anywhere else in, in the live uh, live arts and entertainment, I know that I will have the the proper qualifications to to get the job done. Great, thank you. Um, Miguel, same question for you. How did earning your degree from UM impact your career growth? Well, um, in my country, earning a degree from the United States is, you know, gives a, a, a recognition that you you can get, you know, from from you know easily from any other place. But I can I can say that uh, it gave me another perspective of music, even though I already taken courses. Uh, in you know my undergraduate music uh, program, 
uh, courses on music business. Uh, it gave me a different perspective. Uh, it you know, open my eyes about a different, as I said, a different reality. And, but also, um, besides, you know, the fact that uh, of being able to, to, to share some of this knowledge with my students, I also, uh, I think that I can also face, uh, you know, more um, uh, different uh, challenges a lot better now for example i had the opportunity to work with an independent japanese label uh, about a year ago and uh, just because i knew now that uh, i learned about you know contractual matters or uh, how a, a, a music label works in the structural uh, aspects um, then i then i could uh, you know accept the challenge and work with them and you know uh, uh, came up with a and then it came up with a with a really good product and you know a, a really good job experience great thank you and for our final question taylor how did the faculty offer support while you were a student and or after graduation uh well the faculty were very supportive um while i was in the program um the good thing about an online program is as if others have already mentioned, it lets you work at your own pace. And in my case, I actually needed um, to step away from the program for a bit to be able to pursue my professional goals. Um, but when I was able to and, and ready to jump back into the program, um, I was able to reach out to my professors and they were able to get me back enrolled, which was really, really wonderful um, and allowed me to reapproach the program um, after about a year um, when I was able to pull myself together a little bit and uh, move a little bit further along in my career pathway. Um, but even now, um, I have uh, a pretty um, regular contact with Professor Wood, um, who is the um, person who is in charge of the AP Live program. Uh, and I'm very thankful to have him as a resource and to be able to be connected with the program uh, to continue to um, benefit from uh, all of their knowledge and expertise. Thank you. And Michelle, same question for you. How did the faculty offer support while you were a student and after graduation? Um, while I was a student, I will, I will tell you they were beyond fantastic. You know, it's, it's hard in an online program to feel that they actually know you. And that's one thing that every faculty at, with Frost Online, you know, they had more than beyond time when I would email them and ask a question. And I'm one of those unfortunate students that will ask a lot of questions, you know, and I always felt as if they were actually listening and they knew who I was and they had my best interest, you know, with the, the good and the bad of an online program to this caliber is that you have lots of extremely talented, high caliber students, you know, so finding your way to navigate in, in that, the professors really made it feel as if I was the one that they were teaching. Um, you know, every every good successful person will tell you that the relationships you build are key to your success. And these relationships are far beyond anything I could have ever asked for. Um, I've had Professor Sanchez. You know, has absolutely changed my business. You know, he's gave me the confidence to push through, and um, you know, hopefully franchise and kind of take a bigger leap, far wider than I ever thought I could do. Um, and Professor Elton. She, I had her class right when this pandemic started. And if it wasn't for her, you know, her guidance, I probably would not have finished the, the program because it was just a lot, you know, to go through at once. And they really are there for you. You know, Professor Wood was fantastic. I learned, I actually learned a lot more than I thought I would learn about myself as a person, not just a musician and an entrepreneur that I've been able to use to guide my staff and manage my people in a much better way positive way. So the faculty are fantastic. They, I feel like I have, I have a question about contracts or anything going forward, I can reach out and it wouldn't be a burden. So I'm overly thankful for that. Thank you. And thank you so much to all of our alumni for being here. We really appreciate it. And we love to hear from you and to our faculty panel as well. Thank you so much. Let me just get back to here. <laughs> All right, so moving on, um, just a reminder about our upcoming deadlines. The application and financial aid deadline is Monday, December 4. So uh, please make sure to get everything in if you're interested in applying by that day. Oh, one second. 
And again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, your $300 deposit fee waiver will be applied once you submit your application. So nothing you have to do for that. And again, the application deadline is December 14th. And if you are interested or have additional questions about applying admission, any of that, you can speak to an enrollment advisor at any time by calling the number listed there, or there's also a live chat. And you can start your application just by going to the website, uh, the Uonline website, and uh, everything will be right there and there's steps to walk you through it. And also at the end of this webinar, if you can uh, please complete a one minute survey, that would be great. We'd really appreciate it. Um, again, thank you for joining us. As you can see, FROST is a program that really tries to be, uh, give personal attention to all of our students. We care about our students, we care about their success, and we're always here to communicate with you, either faculty are, myself as a staff, and our alumni are always available to speak to all of our students. So thank you again, and we really appreciate you joining us.